Hey there, welcome to a new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see the interview that I did with Maxi Jazz, the lead vocalist of Fateless. Because of the 20th anniversary of God as a DJ, I decided to dedicate this week's vlog to this great dance track. Enjoy! Fateless is a British electronic band which got formed early 1995 by Rollo and Sister Bliss and Maxi Jazz. Rollo mostly takes care of the production for the band, while Sister Bliss does most of the composing, plus she's playing the piano, violin, saxophone and bass guitar. Maxi Jazz is the lead vocalist of Fateless, plus he takes care of most of the songwriting for the band as well. So far, Fateless sold over 15 million records worldwide. Their most successful singles are Salva Mea, Insomnia, We Come One and God is a DJ. And that one came out in August 1998 as the lead single of the Sunday 8pm album of the band. It reached the number 6 position in the UK and it also reached the number 1 on the Billboard Hot Dance Club Play chart in September 1998. Besides that it reached the number 1 of the Dutch Top 40 chart and the RPM Dance chart in Canada. Furthermore, God is a DJ was a top 10 hit in countries such as Germany, Belgium, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Austria, Scotland, New Zealand, Spain and Switzerland. Fateless won a Brit Award for Best British Act in 1999 for their work on God is a DJ plus other tracks on the Sunday 8pm album. Early 1999, Billboard magazine claimed in an article that many people involved with dance music thought that God is a DJ should have been nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Recording of 1998. But that never happened. So, because this is one of my favorite tracks of Fateless, plus because God as a DJ came out exactly 20 years ago, I thought it would be a good reason to catch up with Maxi Jazz to talk with him about the story behind God is a DJ. My first question to him was what he did remember from the writing process. I remember um, we were doing a we were doing um, a rehearsal and Dave Randall was our guitar player and I remember him walking into the rehearsal wearing this t-shirt it was a blue t-shirt with a v-neck white v-neck and white around the, and across the front it said God is a DJ I don't know where he got I think it was I think it was Portobello Road Market he said he got it from but Sister Bliss loved this t-shirt as a DJ she would so um, she decided that um, the next single we would make would be called God is a DJ. Now I'm a DJ, I've been a DJ, I'd been a DJ for years at that point, but I don't even like DJs, right? So this whole idea about writing a song about God is a DJ, this is like, how am I gonna do that? And um, so I came up with this idea of, um, this is my church, this is where I heal my hurt, which is kind of true. So um, that was how I kind of, managed to write the lyric <laughs> um, because I say this is my church quite a few times but God is a DJ only once <laughs> but yeah it was a it was a fantastic piece of music that she that she'd written I, I really do think the sister bliss is a, is, a, is, a, is a genius with what she does how, how she writes and what she comes up with um, is so generally so um, catchy and um, she has a, a, a real talent, so I think that <clears throat> the lyrics and the music really go well together, yes, I think we get on very well, but her, her, her ability to, to compose riffs and, and little melodies that stick in people's heads, it's, she's amazing with that. Was there any music done already by that time, or did you come up with the lyrics first? No, generally it's the music first. They will give me like a CD with five or six tracks on and um, and we'll sit around and we'll, we'll play them and Rollo and Blissy will think, oh this song reminds me of a, a wet Monday in London and you've got to go to work and you're feeling depressed, write me a lyric, <laughs> that kind of a thing. But this song was called God is a DJ so I, it already had a title, I had to write to that. How long did it take you to finish the lyrics? It wasn't long actually. That was one of the um, that was one of the songs that, that take almost no time. It's like when you get the idea, 
this is my church, this is where I heal my hurts. Ah, oh, got it now. And it all got written. Certain songs take weeks, months, years. But that one was quite quick. Did you guys get any reactions from religious organizations because of the title and the lyrics? I was really hoping that we got more uh, pushback than we actually did. Because I'm a Buddhist. I was brought up as a Christian, um, but I'm, I'm a Buddhist now and, um, and have been for 20 odd years. And I did, I wanted to kind of start a debate about what do you conceive God to be in that case, if you're so upset about what I'm saying. What do you conceive God to be? Could God not be a DJ? Would DJing exist if there wasn't a God? What are you saying? But, you know, essentially I wanted to start that conversation. And um, I got stopped in the street in Ireland. But he said, what do you mean by this? God is a DJ. And he was properly upset with me. And I had to um, think a little bit about what I said to him, because he was upset. Um, and I managed to calm him down. And, I'm not trying to say that, you know, what you believe in, you shouldn't. I'm just looking at it from this perspective rather than this perspective. And so, yeah, but that's the only real argument I got out of the whole song, and that was on the street in Dublin at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so when the track was finished, did you already have a feeling that this one was going to be big? No. No, we had, um, we had put out reverence and Salva Maya and Insomnia prior and Insomnia and Salva Maya kind of disappeared after we put them out and then a year later Insomnia became a hit and as a result the album Reverence started to sell quite well and so we went on tour for about a year and a half and then we came back and said right we're going to make another album but listen Keep your feet on the ground. Lightning does not strike twice in the same place. We're not going to have another hit. Let's just make the best album we can. And um, boom, God is a DJ is this massive hit. And we're like, wow, how did that happen? You guys perform live all around the world. What would be your favorite memory from all the live shows? I have so many. And little moments. Like um, the first time walking onto the stage at Glastonbury in 2010 and seeing like 110,000 people. Yeah, goosebumps like crazy. And then we played our very last gig in um, um, Passing the Baton show in, uh, in, um, in Brixton. And walking out to do the encore and somebody has thrown their bra onto the stage. I was so grateful, right? Tom Jones is one of my favorite heroes ever. And, and it, you just get so many stories of it. Like knickers thrown on the stage and bras and all kinds of stuff. Must be great to be Tom Jones, right? And that was my first moment where I felt a little bit like Tom Jones. So that was really cool. But I have so many, I couldn't even begin. In 2015, you went back to your roots when you started Maxi Jazz and the E-Type Boys. What can you tell us about this project? Well, see, that like, E-Type Boys, this was like, something that just came out of the blue because I kind of decided to stop with Faithless in 2011 because it's been you know, thick end of 20 years. And I'm a Gemini, we get bored very quick. So 20 years is a long time. And um, I kind of just wanted to stop for a bit. And I've always had a guitar in my house since I was 17. But I never used to really take it very seriously. But about three, four years before that, I'd written my first ever song on a guitar. And then three years later, 2008, I wrote another one. So it wasn't like this is something that I was really um, um, really fired up about. It just kind of happened over like three, four, five years. And then when I stopped with Faithless, I realized I had six or seven songs that I'd been playing on guitar that I really liked, still. And like I said, I'm a Gemini, I get bored very quick, especially with music. 
See, if I've written it and I still like it four years later, I'm thinking, mm, the song must be all right. And um, so I decided, well, let me see if I can write some more. And I did. So I got 10, 12 songs together. And I, I have a studio in my house in Jamaica, in my mum's house in Jamaica. I've got a little studio. So I'd put all these demos together. And then I went back to England and I called up my old keyboard player, Chris Jerome, who's a musical genius, he's a boffin. And I said, I've got some songs, I want to play them to you. And I played them to him and he said, Maxie, these are really good. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Let's get a band together. So I have this band now and, and um, we play a mixture of rock, blues, jazz, funk and reggae. Yeah, all of the stuff that I really, really, really like. Um, and it all comes out, and I'm not a really good classically trained musician, so I'll sort of mess around until I hear something that I like. And it might be a bit bluesy, or it might be reggae, or it might be a bit funky, or a bit jazzy. But it just comes out the way it comes out. So that's what the E-Type Boys is. It's like a platform for my, uh, my own musicality. And, I'm a child of the 70s. We had bands like what, Pink Floyd, Traffic, Jimi Hendrix, all of these guys, and they used to make like 10 minute songs. They'd take you over here and then bring you over here and then take you over here and then bring you back to the beginning. So the E-Type Boys is a lot about, um, almost like music for its own sake. It's not three and a half minutes of thump, 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 and it sounds great, it makes you do that. It takes you somewhere. And um, I've had the most fun in my life on stage with the E-Type Boys other than anything else. Because it's, because it's new and it's, <clears throat> and it's mine. And you're playing it to people who've never heard it before. So when you get a good response from that, it's just like, this is what I want to do. Besides that, you're a DJ as well. Yeah. What can people expect when they will see you as a DJ? Well, what people have to remember is that I'm a child of the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And so all of the music I play kind of comes from those times. So you might hear Fly Like an Eagle by Steve Miller or Body Heat by James Brown, along with Genesis Justice or, you know, anything that's in the last 30 or 40 years that's funky and exciting. I'm likely to play it, you know, even tunes like Silly Games by Janet Kay, which is a massive tune, <laughs> massive in England, and everybody knows those tunes. The Butterfly by Crazy Town, nobody hears that anymore. Right? Every time I drop that tune, the whole place goes, oh, because these are tunes that people know, but nobody plays anymore. So when you, you get on and you stick them on, along with some stuff that they might know from quite recently, it, it makes a really nice vibe. But I am um, always kind of a bit upset when people make great music from 10, 20, 30 years ago, and they get like a year window or two years, and then people stop playing it. Why? <laughs> what are your future plans? Music. Music and sex. That's, that's pretty much it. So we can expect more stuff from Maxi Jazz and the Etai Boys? Absolutely, yeah. I love playing with the band. It's, it's one of my favorite things. What I'm trying to do now, because Faithless being kind of strictly electronic, let's say Faithless is over here, and the Etai Boys is as analog as it gets. So the Etai Boys is way over here, right? Way over here. So what I'm trying to do now is make a little middle ground so you can come guide, kind of guide people from Faithless to the E-Type Boys without having to make them work musically <laughs> as, as hard as, as, as it is. So having uh, done the band thing, made the album, got the band ready, I mean we're ready to go at any time now. So right now I'm working with, <clears throat> I'd love to be able to tell you who I'm working with. I'd really like to, but I can't because it's, it's, it's still a bit like this. It's like uh, the transfer window, right? So we're not quite signed yet, but I'm working with a bunch of different people and hopefully 2019, 
Um, you'll hear some very different stuff. Excuse me, I just got... <laughs> yeah, there's a fly. Fuck off. <laughs> So in 2019, more Maxi Jazz and the e type boys? Oh, absolutely, more e type boys. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff, just coming out with my own name featuring, or somebody else featuring Maxi Jazz. There's, there's a bunch of stuff happening. There's a lot of stuff happening. I've been, I've been quite busy. Uh, and what about any new stuff from Fateless? Not really, only because I had a conversation with Blissey the other day. Um, because they're making they're making another Faithless album right now. Oh, cool! Um, but I'm not. When you, as a Gemini, when you've done the same thing for 20 years, you know there's a lot of stuff that you might have done that you haven't because you were doing that. And so I'm kind of going back into my soul now. I call it soul mining. I'm digging into my own soul to find out what's in there. And it's, it's, it's surprising me and it's exciting me and so I want to keep digging. I don't want to go back to where I was, I want to go forward to where I should be now. Thank you very much for your time and good luck in the future. It's a pleasure, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers brother. Alright, that was it, this week's vlog, my interview with Maxi Jazz. Maxi, thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. And thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to hit the subscribe button if you didn't already. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time, bye bye.